Yeah, um, I was last called to show the role of uh, EAA um, more in respect to European politics, and I, I'm just concentrating on that very much. And uh, have Roy and I, uh, we developed this uh, talk together, and I have also more support uh, from the board, the treasurer, and former presidents are there, who have uh, have been to meetings of the European Heritage Alliance, which will be very much uh, the topic of this talk. So we are here in uh, Barcelona with uh, a new record of 3,000 delegates. Uh, at the annual meeting, that also gives us a new role, a new uh, responsibility to speak for the uh, archaeologists of Europe. Uh, we will be 25 years old in, in Bern. Uh, we have achieved and are the, um, the major platform for the archaeologists in Europe, but we also have this um, uh, yeah, we have this role um, uh, already uh, since a long time as a political protagonist, uh, we have participatory status with the Council of Europe uh, as an international non-governmental organization. So that gives us the right to, to participate in the meetings in Strasbourg and have a, an important role there. Um, and uh, this role was also taken especially also by former presidents uh, I, they were very instrumental also in shaping uh, Council of Europe uh, conventions. But, but we must uh, recognize at the moment that the Council of Europe actually in its importance is declining. And so uh, we are uh, the European Union now uh, through the funding uh, initiatives uh, and also um, with the initiative of the European Year of Cultural Heritage comes more into focus. Uh, so. Um, uh, EAA um, applied to uh, uh, in the, um, before this year of uh, uh, cultural heritage uh, to become uh, to represent um, European archaeology in the European Heritage Alliance 3.3. What is this European Heritage Alliance? It's an informal European central uh, platform. Uh, and there are more than 40, and there are actually 48 uh, European or international networks and organizations active uh, in there. Uh, the head of uh, this um, um, platform is Europa Nostra, uh, actually just one of the organizations, but they were very clever in getting money from the EU and uh, uh, kind of being the, the, the network organizer uh, of this whole thing. Uh, they are financed by Creative Europe, a program that is running out. Maybe Roy will ma mention something uh, on that later on. Uh, the European Heritage Alliance was launched in 2011 in uh, Amsterdam, and uh, EAA only joined now later in 2017. The name uh, refers to the Article 3.3, which was Leonard was. Uh, the, um, uh, already showing uh, showing to us, which uh, is kind of um, says the union shall respect its rich cultural and linguistic diversity and shall ensure that Europe's cultural heritage is safeguarded and enhanced. And that's the tiny bit where uh, the European Union can, can really act on cultural heritage in the member states. Uh, these are the members, the 48 members um, of the Heritage Alliance, and uh, I pointed out Europa Nostra, as, which calls itself the voice of cultural heritage in Europe, and it really is. It is, I'd say, uh, compared with EAA, a much more professional organization. They are much better funded, uh, and I, I come to that in, in a second point. Um, all the ones that are here in bold are members um, of a stakeholder group, and this stakeholder group uh, uh, was the group of organizations that had the right uh, to label uh, um, events in the European Year of Cultural Heritage. So, uh, for example, you, uh, EAA was responsible for international uh, events um, in archaeology to label them or to decide whether or not to label them for the year. Yeah, it's actually the Heritage Alliance uh, that has been advocating for this European uh, Year of Cultural Heritage 
and I was very much in contact with the EU institutions. I've maybe mentioned the uh, 18 Alliance members, and uh, the, the most important um, event of this year um, um, happened in Berlin uh, in June, and um, as Neska Mihailovic uh, compared the, this European Cultural Heritage Summit as, uh, somehow with Davos, with the World Economic Forum. That's something she wants to put in our head, that we should have meetings like that more often, maybe not, not every year, but every five years, maybe. And uh, from, from this meeting, uh, they had a Berlin call, call to action, which is uh, uh, a very broad um, um, statement on, on how, how on, uh, cultural heritage uh, should be treated and should be acted on, and it can still be signed uh, on the website of Europa Nostra. And one of the points is now really, what is the heritage of the cultural year of, uh, of the European Year of Cultural Heritage? Well, how do we carry that on? How do we get that into practical politics and something rewarding for archaeology and uh, cultural heritage? Uh, uh, we must have a quick look at Europa Nostra. Um, it was already founded in uh, 1963, so it's uh, double the age than EAA, so it's much longer in the field. Um, I was uh, citing their motto, the voice of cultural heritage in Europe, and uh, the voice is of obviously Maestro Placido Domingo as, as a, an artist, as a um, uh, he is always singing, so he's really in double ways uh, the voice of cultural heritage. And uh, just recently, their executive president is now an important uh, German archaeologist. So there is an archaeologist very high up uh, in this organization. Um, Felipe Criado Vado, our president, is one of the 60 members uh, in the Council of uh, Europa Nostra. Uh, and these ones, they elect um, the, the board uh, of Europa Nostra. Uh, a ve very important person that doesn't pop up on the website very much, but if you are on Twitter or something, you, you see that uh, much of the publicity and of the voice and I'd say the image of Europa Nostra is actually Sneska Kvartflik Mihailovic. Uh, she was with us last year in Maastricht and she also gave one of the keynotes. Uh, and uh, what is also apart from the money, uh, the location where Europa Nostra has, has its uh, secretariat in uh, The Hague uh, and also an office in Brussels, of course, is a very good location to do politics directly. Um, but I want to, was it here? Was it on the next page? Um, yeah, here it is. Um, the Europa Nostra and the Heritage Alliance very much stand for an el elitist concept of uh, cultural heritage, which kind of sometimes or very often contrasts with what archaeologists understand as cul culture and cultural heritage. So there is uh, some friction we should be aware of and uh, proactively uh, work with this. Yeah. Um, I want to, to come, uh, now this is the possibility EAA has in the European framework uh, to uh, uh, act together with other actors in, uh, in the field of cultural heritage, not just in archaeology, but, but in, a, in a larger field. Uh, but how can we, uh, how must we ourselves uh, change uh, to, to become more active in this? Um, I, I try to put this a bit, um, and, and this is what I think is, is the message of our strategic uh, framework and of the things that are going on uh, in the ways how we change the board, how we change the communication with members, uh, is that we, we want uh, a much more active role of the members but also of, of every board member, which goes from, from governance to em empowerment or from representation. Uh, am I a res representative of Germany and of women in the board or do I have a special task and function? Uh, rather, uh, 
for example, in my task, uh, looking after the communities, this is a completely different way how you look at yourself in an organization and how you act in an organization. Um, and this also, uh, of course, then uh, somehow gets us away from the academic platform uh, to, to have, say, we, we must act, we must have social re uh, relevance, and we must implement what we are discussing. Yeah. I'm trying. Okay. Um, so to, to wrap those things up, um, our active role within the Heritage Alliance 3.3 is uh, combined uh, with high representation costs, which we tried hard to meet, and so that it, they have very meetings very often, <laughs> and so we try to send one somebody every time. But that is really without a professional staff uh, doing that, it is uh, quite dif difficult. Uh, we must do that together with our um, partners uh, because we are in that heritage alliance, but we also want to speak for them and with them. Uh, we recently achieved to be um, uh, to come into the transparency re register of the European Commission through this activity in the Heritage Alliance. So we are listed now as one of the lobby organizations, or professional lobby organizations, but uh, there's another transparency register. Um, yeah, um, we must discuss at another point probably the benchmarks, which would be one of these actions where we want to implement the experts' uh, discussions into practical politics and influence the European Parliament elections in May. And I've been mentioning, uh, yeah, we, we must boost uh, our members' expertise from the communities. We, they feed into these actions. And uh, there are ideas about how we can form a, maybe form an EAA council also to get more uh, from the members. And I was mentioning this example already. Thank you very much. Thank you.